Welcome back, Summoner. My name is Nathan Ng, but you can call me tonight. And we're going to be looking over some of the best champions to one trick in the Rift in the current meta. Since playing a champion over and over again removes many of the learning curves, having a one trick to rely on is sure to help you improve at the game. But first, let's cover our question of the day. Ionia or Noxus? For me, it's got to be Ionia because uh, <laughs> they're bodacious with, you know, Ari and... Anyway, let's go ahead and get into the video. Uh... <laughs> Roll the VO. From the top down, we're going to be starting off with the well-known bruiser in the Baron lane. Camille is our first pick to one trick, with enough versatility to work both in the Baron lane and in the jungle. Camille's long legs are much more than just show. All her abilities link back to her giant needle-like legs as she's able to weave in and out of fights. Her legs cover a large range in and out of her lane. This means that her poke and playstyle can either be extremely safe or overly aggressive. Landing her second ability, Tactical Sweep, is easy in Wild Rift because the radius of the ability is massive, making for an easy follow-up poke damage or a free slow for a streamlined escape if the jungler is lurking around the corner. Her second ability is easy to follow up with her first ability, Precision Protocol. Precision Protocol deals true damage on hit and grants her movement speed alongside bonus physical damage. Combine this with Triforce for pokes that chunk huge portions of the enemy's health with each hit. But Camille doesn't just burst down champions with true damage, she's also a hyperscaling mobile bruiser that can't be followed by most champions. Camille's third ability, Hookshot, lets her jump over walls and knock up enemies she bumps into. This ability combined with the passive that periodically gives her a shield makes her a savage to run into the rift. Similarly to Camille, Fiora is also great for chasing down champions. In the Baron lane, Fiora is safe for poking and fast engages. A good reason to main Fiora is due to her passive duelist stance. Her vital points literally tell you where to hit and heavily reward the player. Not only does she does a sudden burst of true damage, but she also heals herself and gains 30% movement speed that decays over 1.75 seconds. This passive is much more interactive than any others on the Rift. The players need to stay aware of the vital spot's positioning to open up the most opportunities for dealing damage. Movement speed, roaming, and map winners all play together when using Fiora. Being able to spot caught out enemies and dashing across the map to take them out makes them for easy kills with minor thrills. Fiora's lunge has a short cooldown and deals bonus damage, but the cooldown is reduced by 60% when she hits an enemy champion. This is significant because in League PC she only has 50% of her cooldown refunded. This is probably one of the main reasons that we have to keep recommending Fiora as one of the best champions to one trick. Before we move on, be sure to join our community discord. We have tons of giveaways and also if you want to just hang out with me, uh, I'll be there sometimes. A champion that transcends lanes and tier lists alike, Akali is the next champion that we have to recommend you to one trick. It is hard not to recommend the Shrouded Assassin as she's one of the best solo laners in the game since the release. Her kit allows her to easily poke and follow up with her passive to regain energy, and there's practically no counter to her shroud. Not even Ash's third ability Hawkshot reveals Akali's position while she's hiding in her mist of invisibility. But Akali does not just rely on her shroud to get the upper hand on her opponents. She also disorients players with her third ability, causing her to throw a dagger and dash behind the enemy. The speed at which Akali moves is near impossible to react to, especially when it comes to trying to dodge her ultimate. Her ultimate is an instant dash that deals burst damage towards everything at the end of the dash. There's a reason it's called perfect execution. The enemies won't be able to react to it and the dash lets Akali immediately jump into a fight and can actually be recasted to jump out of the fight. Akali is a top tier champion that we can't recommend enough, so go ahead and check it out. If Akali isn't the type of burst assassin for your playstyle, maybe somebody with more teamfighting potential is more up your avenue. Katarina is another solid pick for mid laners in any region. Collect the Dagger and Spin to Win is the name of the game when it comes to playing the Sinister Blade. Katarina is similar to Akali in the way that she could jump in and out of a fight while doing a massive amount of burst damage. The damage she has been pulling out by herself in the mid lane is threatening. When she lands on top of her dagger with a rune like Electrocute, the burst damage makes the enemy reconsider ever going close to poke you. Katarina, like most assassins, is heavily rewarded for leaving her lane and roaming to either the Baron lane or the Dragon lane. Her abilities have their cooldowns reset from acquiring a kill or even just landing an assist. This makes getting some more popular lanes even more impactful. With an ultimate that hits everything in range and mobility that lets her dash instantly, we simply have to recommend one trick in Katarina for the upcoming weeks. Next up in line we have the jungle and a champion that you should main. Returning to the top of our list is Evelyn, permanently shrouded. Despite nerves, Eve is still an unstoppable force in the jungle. Once she gets what she wants, she just disappears and goes invisible. Oh, I'm getting flashbacks. When she reaches level 5, she becomes invisible up to a certain range for the rest of the game. There are no control wards, so Evelyn gets all the advantages to invisibility without the counterplay of control ward placement. The nerfs weren't enough to stop her from bursting down strong and weak champions alike. Her main attack and her first ability, Hate Spikes, have their damage reduced by 5 at every rank. 
Even with a maximum of 20 damage loss due to that nerf, it hasn't affected her gameplay enough to outweigh her overwhelming advantages. 20 damage becomes negligible when you're being comboed for 800 plus damage. Whatever the case, Eve is still considered a top tier hyper carry with the kit perfect for the jungle. She might be considered the queen of the jungle, but who is the king? The king of the jungle is somebody that's quite catty. Our analyst team has been scripting our heads trying to decide between Kha'Zix and Rengar ever since the release, but with the prevalence of the bushes on the smaller map, Rengar has come out on top as our pick for the king of the jungle. Kha'Zix is definitely a close second, but the amount of scenarios Rengar is given to jump enemies with bushes outweigh the amount of opportunities that Kha'Zix has to do the same thing. The map is small and the bushes are everywhere. Every section of the jungle, the entirety of the dragon and baron lane, and even outside the baron and dragon pit, bushes are there to greet you. The trick with Rengar's bush jumping ability is that he gets to recast it every single time he enters a bush, even the same bush that he's just jumped out of. There is no delay to this physical bonus damage attack that constantly resets itself. Rengar has proved himself to be the true hunter, and is our recommended pick to one trick for jungling in the upcoming weeks. You can also check out our 1 minute guide to Rengar right over here. With so many burst assassins taking over the rift, which ADCs can you use to combat these invisible threats? We here at Pro Guys got you covered because we know exactly which champions are strong in the meta. If you ever find yourself surrounded by burst assassins, there is no safer pick in the ADC lane than Ezreal. Ezreal can deal out consistent damage while staying at a safe distance. Experienced Ezreal players know when and where to position to optimally gain an advantage. For example, if Ezreal's jungler comes into gank, a well-rounded Ezreal player can position next to his jungler to easily follow up by landing decisive blows throughout the gank. Ezreal primarily uses his arcane shift to dodge away from enemies, but if his jungler comes in with a well-timed gank, then Ezreal can actively use his skill offensively by dashing towards the enemy before they escape. Alternatively, even if the enemy is able to skip a gank, Ezreal still has a chance to secure the kill with his global ultimate, making him a fantastic champion to one-trick in the current meta. Ezreal is not the only ADC with the powerful global ultimate that secures kills. Our next recommendation, Draven, has that and axes to back him up. Draven is powerful as an ADC for very different reasons when compared to Ezreal. He does not have a poke nearly as safe as Ezreal, and his only escape is a movement speed buff, and his damage is reliant on catching individual axes. But despite all of that, Draven is still a top tier pick because of how Wild Rift works as a game. Draven is a champion that cannot live without farming. Every time Draven kills a minion or catches an axe, he gains appreciation points. These appreciation points are transferred into gold after every kill. This is where Draven gains most of his power over his opponents. He does not need 3 kills to be fed. Draven can instead use 150 appreciation points and 1 kill to have a similar amount of gold. This sudden power spike that Draven receives early game can be the difference between a BS sword on the first back versus Cloak of Agility. To add on, these spinning axes deal massive damage compared to all the other ADC's auto attacks, making Draven one of the hardest hitting auto attack carry in the game. ADCs in general work best when paired with the right support, and there is no one better out there on the rift than Braum. Braum is a mustache man that we all wish we could meet. Honestly, I've been trying to grow mine for 25 years. It's so unfair. Maybe that's why I hate Kangas. Representing Endurance and Poros, Braum is considered one of the strongest tanks in Wild Rift at the moment. Not only can Braum tank damage, but he can completely negate it with his towering shield that lasts for 5 seconds. He might only be able to point his shield in one direction, but it is still effective enough to completely block an entire MF's ultimate. 5 seconds is a long time in Wild Rift. Every champion on both teams can use all of their abilities in under 5 seconds, making this shield a must have on your team. Braum is not only an indomitable wall, but is also a crowd control king. His passive concussive blow puts a stack on a champion attacked by Braum or champions that are hit by his ability. This is every ADC's dream. After 4 auto attacks from Braum or an ally, the target will be stunned, synergizing wonderfully with so many auto attack reliant ADCs. Between being an unstoppable wall and stunning stoic, Braum has our vote for what champion you should mean in the support lane. If you're looking for a Braum guide, be sure to check out our 1 minute video going over exactly that. The final support that we have to recommend in this dive meta is Janna, and just like Janna, you also blow me away. Janna is the best disengaging champion in Wild Rift and League of Legends. Now you might be confused as to what I mean when I talk about disengaging champions. To clarify, disengages happen when a champion or an ally is trying to get away from an engage, as the name suggests. A champion like Janna can use her slow, tornado, or ultimate to help push the enemy back successfully disengaging from the situation. Her slow on her first ability is great for helping out allies catch up to the fight, and her knockup guarantees that the enemy won't be able to react for at least a second. She can initiate a team fight or stop an onslaught of attacks. Truly a versatile and impactful support that we recommend when tricking for optimal results. We still have our honorable mentions for this patch being Lee Sin for the jungle and Irelia for the Baron lane. Lee Sin has huge map control given his ability to jump over walls with his first and third ability, making his presence felt all over the rift even when he's nowhere in your lane. 
However, having no invisibility and relying on follow-up means that he's not our first recommendation for the jungle, but still highly rated when compared to all the other junglers. For our other honorable mention, Irelia, we can't recommend you that you one trick her yet because, well, she hasn't been released yet. All new champions seem to have an overpowered spike for the first patch of the release, and Irelia probably won't be any different. We know that she'll have an easy wave clear and players won't really understand her passive damage on release. Use this info to your advantage and I'm sure more studious wild wave players will understand Irelia's strength when she releases. And that's all the time that we have for today. New champions are always coming out and the meta is always shifting, so be sure to subscribe to our channel below. I've been your host, Nathan Ng, and I can't wait to see you guys next time on the Discord where we could go ahead and continue the pro Nathan Colt and just take down Kangas. <laughs> Trip squad! No. Take down Kangas. Bye! <laughs>